What's up, divas and divos? So your girl is back. Listen, let me tell you guys, you know, it's already Real Talk Wednesday, all that good stuff. It actually was Real Talk Wednesday last Wednesday, but let me tell y'all. So I recorded the video and it was like an hour and 15 minutes in length, okay? And later on that day, not too much later, I would say probably like about two hours later to two and a half hours later, I went to um, to edit the video. Basically, you know, with a real talk video, I don't really have to edit much because it, I'm just talking. I'm not doing no tutorial. I'm just putting in like, I'm checking for the volume and making sure that the volume is good. And I'm making sure that the, like, the lighting, the coloring is good in the video, you know? So sometimes you may see in my videos that the colors may differ only because of the sunlight. Um, I've had a lot of difficulty in the past couple of weeks because it's been really cloudy out here. So it's like the sun is going in and out of my videos, which is pissing me off, but neither here nor there. So I did the entire video and I went to edit it. And as I edited my videos, always like in any video, you know, you do hear some background noise. Like you may hear like the fan, or you may hear like a, just whatever you may hear a little bit of background noise. And I always make sure to remove the background noise out of my videos. So that way you don't hear any kind of like hissing noise. That shit drives me crazy. Like I cannot stand to watch somebody's video and you got all this like bad background noise, like, like just noise, not like people, but just like, just bad noise. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I always make sure to take always that out of my videos because I don't want you to hear anything but me or like the music that I've included in the video. So as I went to edit it, you know, I I clicked my audio options in my editing software because it does it automatically, some portions of it, and then I have to go in and do other things to it just in case it, the sound may be a little bit off or maybe too much noise in the background. So as I got my headphones on, you know what I'm saying, I'm listening, listening, I hear all this noise like it's not even noise it's coming from the microphone okay so it was like you can hear me but i'm lower than the actual audio so i'm not really sure what happened with the microphone it's the same microphone i've been using not since i've started because this one is a little bit different this one i wear it so that way i don't have to like really talk too loud Versus the one that's sitting on top of my camera that's just like, you know, shotgun mic. That one has never really given me any problems and I might just have to go back to that one. But this lapel mic that, you know, it's like, you know, it's a, a mic with a wire. You don't see it or you can clip it on wherever you want. I've never had any issue with that. And um, I wear it under my clothes, like clipped on my bra right here. You can put it anywhere. But I noticed that when I do like hair vi videos, tutorials... I don't want it to be just anywhere because you can, that, this thing picks up anything. So I'm wondering, was it the shirt that I was wearing? Because it had like, you know, like those iron on shirts where you can put it and it has like, it's kind of like plastic or hard right here. Well, I had on a shirt like that. Not saying that I ironed it on, but I did purchase it like that. So I'm wondering if, cause it was dead smack in the middle and it was really hard. I wonder if the microphone was like somehow like up against it and it just messed up the sound. I don't really know, but let me tell you, I sat there for like a fucking hour trying to fix the audio and I got it to where you can hear me a little bit better and I, you can hear the noise, not as loud, but it was so fucking annoying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the sound was so bad. Like me personally, I got it to where it was listenable, but y'all wouldn't have really wanted to listen to that for an hour. You know what I'm saying? So it was either Put the video up and have everybody fucking complaining about the sounds, which I was going to say in the video, like put an insert that the sound was messed up or just not put the video up. I'd rather just not put the video up because I'm not about to just hear or just read the comments. Like, oh, the sound was messed up. Oh, the sound was messed up. Yeah, bitch. I know that because I did put an insert. So to avoid all of that, because I would have got an attitude and then y'all would have got an attitude. I just was like, fuck it. I'm not going to put the video up. It bothered me, but I wasn't about to come back upstairs and re-record a Real Talk video because let me tell y'all, Real Talk is like straight out. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's no rehearsal. There's no rehearsal with any of my videos. It is what it is. If I do a hair tutorial video and I just say how I feel, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? This is live. You know what I'm saying? This is how it is. I'm not about to take anything out. So I couldn't go back upstairs and just redo the real talk because everything that I said out of my mouth came from my heart and what I felt. So it was kind of hard for me to go back and do that same real talk over versus today. I'm going to do it again, but 
this is a whole week later. You know what I'm saying? So I do apologize for that, you guys. Hopefully this does not happen again. Um, I did do a video that same day, real um, as I with real talk, and this video was with my grandson, and we did our Dollar Tree video. However, this time around, the the uh, mic was on my arm only because he was sitting next to me. So I wanted it to be able to be heard. So I'm really hoping that this time around, it does not sound like this. So we're going to get into this video real quick. I'm going to stop the camera for a minute because I just want to play it back just to make sure. And then I'm going to take off where I left off. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Like I didn't take the memory card out. I just listened to it through the camera and it sounded pretty decent. So hopefully it stays like that. Okay. So you guys, let's get into this real talk. Um, there really isn't much for me to say about myself for the past week. Um, basically like, you know what I'm saying? Like I have been a little bit not, oh, yes, there was something. So, you know, I have had not really, yeah, well, I've been going through some things with my daughter. Okay. You guys remember that. And I told you guys that I, you know, I need to, for her to be more motivated, stop being lazy, just do something, get a better job. You know, basically I've explained that all to you guys and in a nutshell. Okay. So last week, um, it was a week ago because I was trying to tell you guys this in last week's real talk, but a week ago, you know, I was up late. Um, I'm always really up late and I was probably either finishing editing the video or finish editing, um, or finish making a wig. Either way, I was up and, you know, my daughter came home from work. It was in the evening. Of course, it was late. It was like three o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I had um, told her to come in the kitchen with me because I was about to just, you know, I was about to roll up. I was about to roll me a blunt and go to sleep. And, you know, basically I just started conversating with her about, you know, her appearance and, you know, the things that she's been going through and what she's been doing. And, you know, it, it, this conversation turned out to be a hour and a half long, but we was just standing at the kitchen counter, just talking. And, um, I just basically let her know that, you know, what I said to her the following week, the prior week was, not meant to intend to hurt her feelings because I'm never intending to hurt anyone's feelings. That's not the type of person I am. You know what I'm saying? Like when I tell you something, if I tell you something, the same thing over and over and over and over again, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you this because it's for your own good. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's perfect. Everybody needs some guidance. Everybody needs someone to tell them like, this is good or this is not good. You know what I'm saying? Everybody needs some help. Everybody needs somebody in general. Okay. So during this conversation, you know, I did let her know, like, I apologize if I made you feel like less of a person or made you feel like I was being mean or I was coming at you because that was not my intentions. The things that I need you to do, I need you to do them for yourself and for your son. And I have no way, shape or form trying to hurt your feelings. I'm here for you and I'm always here to help you. I said, but it's a time has come where it's time for you and your brother to grow up. You know what I'm saying? So we had a long conversation and we cried. Like, we, I think I was crying the most. I was crying the most because you know what? As a parent, as a mother, we really don't want our children to just sink to the bottom. Like nobody wants their child to be left behind. And when I say left behind, I'm not talking about grade school or anything. I'm talking about in general, in life. You know what I'm saying? Like we as parents all want good for our children. We want the best for our children. At least I would hope that's what parents would want or all parents would want. Maybe there are a few that don't give two fucks. You know what I'm saying? And there are those, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not one of those. And me personally, I know that, you know, I had a hard life. My mother only had two of us. She had my my sister when I was 12. So I was the only child for a while. And my, thank you, son. Thank you, son. Okay, great. Um, So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm bright as fuck right now. Hold on. Okay. See so what I'm saying with the son? All day long, this has been doing this. So, you know, as a parent, I just want everything, not everything doesn't have to be perfect. But I know as a parent, as a mother, as a person who loves another person, I always want the best for you. You know, growing up, I didn't have much. My mom was a single mom. She, you know, she didn't have much. So it was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? My mom tried her best with me. And of course, I did not listen to her all the time. Why would I? I'm a kid. You know what I'm saying? As I got older, of course, I didn't listen to her. I was rebellious because I'm a teenager. I'm a kid. You know what I'm saying? So I look back at the things that she has told me in life. Now, as a as a grown up, as an adult, and I think to myself, like, yo, I really wish I would have listened to my mom a little bit more. 
You know what I'm saying? Because if I would have listened to my mom a little bit more or a whole lot more, then some of the things in life that I went through and struggled with, I might not have had to go through that. You know what I'm saying? So, and I also look at my mom and I think about the things that she has told me and taught me and said to me, you know what I'm saying? Back then. And I'm like, or how she was with me. And I, I say to myself, I'm glad my mom was like that. You know, my mom was a really strict mom. My mother was overly strict. And, you know, as a kid, as a teenager, you're not really feeling that. You know, you want to be with the rest of the people outside who can roam the streets and just do what teenagers do. My mom was not with that. My mom was not with it at all. She wasn't having it. So I was the type that had to stay in the house, had to play in front of the window where she could see me, you know, say, because we lived in projects. It was just like that. And I hated her and not really hated her, but I just hated the way that she, you know, parented me, I guess you would say. But when you think about it and you look back at that, like back then, it's like, thank God you was like that to me. Because if you were, I would have probably been somebody who was running all over the place, running amok, doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Didn't have no moral, no values, no education, no nothing, no home training, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I could have still been like that as an adult. Because sometimes when you're a teenager, a young teenager, 18, 19, 20, that shit progresses worse in life and you still remain the same. So I'm really happy that my mom was the way she was to me, like really strict, because had she not been like that, then I wouldn't be the type of person I am too. Now, don't get me twisted. Don't get it fucked up. My mom says to me to this day, you are worse than I am. My mother claims that I am more strict than her. And you know what? With this day and age, you have to be. And then also you have to stay on top of your kids. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like I'm ever trying to be hard on anybody, but I feel like this. I'm not about to be around forever. I, unfortunately, I'm not going to be here forever. I wish that I could be here forever on this earth, but I'm not. And when I'm gone, I want to make sure that when I die, at least that you all are okay, including my grandchildren. So, you know, we had a heart to heart and I cried more than she did because I hate for my kids to feel like that I'm coming at them too hard or that I don't like them or I don't love them. I just need them to realize what I'm coming from and how this is going to benefit you. So... I just wanted to like share that with you guys, you know what I'm saying, real quick. What are you doing over there? Hey. She be real sneaky. What are you doing? You need a haircut. So, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to just share that with you guys. What? Do you want to say hello to everybody? Do you, do you, do you, do you? Do you want to say hi? Say hi. I gotta get off my mic. Say hi. It's me, Pancake, right? Yeah. So if you guys remember, this is Pancake, my dog that I adopted. Um like in December um, sometime from the animal shelter. And she is two years old. She was born in June. June 1st is her birthday. So we are Gemini, right? Yes, we are Gem we Geminis. Okay. But um, yes, yeah, she is um, a Karen Terrier, you know, a little Toto. That's what she is. But she got to get a haircut because when I first showed you guys her, she she had less hair. Well, I'm letting her hair grow out because I want to get her a different type of haircut. So she's looking a little kind of scruffy right now, right? Look at scruffy. But um, yeah, say hello to everyone. Not to me. Oh, yes. This is this is my buddy. Like seriously, this is my buddy. She follows me around. This is my shadow. She act like she's the CIA and I'm the goddamn president. Wherever I go, she's there. She will have her back to. Um, towards me and just be standing looking at the surroundings like guarding me so this is my buddy okay and if you think she's small she is small but she has a big heart and she has big courage okay she thinks she is a rottweiler this is what she thinks she is she thinks she's a rottweiler because she tries to attack people like if i'm walking down the street with her for her walk and people are walking towards me that live in my neighborhood she's trying to attack them okay um, yeah, so she thinks she's a Rottweiler and she's not actually a Rottweiler, but she thinks she is and she's a sweetheart. Aren't you, boo? Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Don't show your nips. You can't be showing your nips on camera. Mm, say hi. Say hi. So that is what I've been up to. Um, other than that, you know, I have just been making wigs and working, 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 making wigs and working. And, um, you know, that's about it. So on that note, we're just going to get into this real talk that I did last week. And you guys know the spiel. If you have a real talk that you need me to talk about on this channel right here, 
So you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. You'll find an email in the bottom. And if you want me to not mention the names, like, you know, your name is Pancake, like hers, but you're going to change it. Just let me know that in the email. Otherwise, I'm going to change it because like 99.9%, 99.9% of the time, baby daddy, I'm going to change it. Okay. So if you didn't tell me. Also, oh, you probably can't see them. I best, I best, I best zoom in, right? Why like, why can't you see them on camera like this? I'm going to just zoom in. You see them now? Okay, so they look better in person. Oh, anyway, so I was on Shop Miss A. Now, this stuff I bought myself, okay? And they got some new faux um, mink lashes, okay? So they're not real mink, but they faux. You know, fake. Fake ass. Fake ass mink. And they were a dollar fifty-five each. Girl, let me tell y'all. Now, these are not looking that great probably because I had them on like over a week. But anyway, let me tell y'all. I'm going to zoom out because I don't really want to be too close to y'all. I got two pairs, but multiple of those two pairs, Alita and Brianna. That's the names of the lashes. Alita is the ones I have on and Brianna. Those lashes are bomb as fuck, okay? I'm just telling y'all this. I'm just, just telling y'all this, just so y'all know, in case y'all looking for some eyelashes and shit, that these are bomb as fuck. And unfortunately, you can't see them that close up in the um thing. Not that I can, I mean, I can see them, but. Yeah, just check Shop Miss A out. The link for that is down below too. Why you only got your head showing? You got just your face showing, huh? Ooh, yeah. Look at you, Pancake. Look, look at you. So, on that note, let's get into this real talk. You ready? Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 That I did last week, and I'm about to do it again. Okay. Dear April, hi, you can call me Gia. I'm 26 years old, and I have a pretty good job. I'm originally from Texas, but I'm currently living three hours away from home, which isn't too bad, but can be rather lonely at times. I have a few relatives here, but we are not as close anymore. Well, getting to the point of why I'm writing you. You see, I was celibate for almost a whole year. I know what you're thinking, tough times. But sweetheart, I'm really not thinking tough times because the bitch was still living longer than a year right here. Okay. Sometimes you just got to listen. If you got motherfucking fingers and hands, bitch, you don't need a man. I mean, you might need one occasionally. But don't feel bad about being celibate. Never feel bad about that shit. It ain't no fucking tough times. Okay. So as I was saying, okay, um, I, I'm writing you. You see, I was celibate for almost a year. I know what you're thinking. Tough times. I just wanted to make sure the next man I was with would be worth it as in relationship worthy. See, I'm looking for a man that is a provider, loyal, honest, loves God, and will put me first. I've been through a lot and I've got my heart broken time and time again. And after a while, April, you just get tired of it. Well, the night of my 26th birthday, my friend dragged me to the club. She said I needed to bring in my birthday the right way. I agreed and I decided to go out. I was hella fine that night. You know, a little extra. It was my day. As soon as I get to the club, you know, niggas were trying to holler and I gave a few dudes my number. It was my birthday and I'm single. So why not? Well, the same day I was on my way to Houston with my mom to have a girl's day to enjoy the rest of my birthday. As we were driving, one of the dudes I met the night before hit me up and was like, what you doing? I told him it was my birthday and I'm on my way to Dallas. He says, seriously, I'm on my way that way myself. I travel back and forth for work. He does construction. He said, well, I would love to take you out for your day. My mother was hearing our conversation, was like, you should go, enjoy yourself. I decided I'd go and I met him out that night. We went to a nice jazz restaurant, super cute. I had a great time. He was a gentleman the entire time. He kept saying how beautiful I was. You know, you know, April, they have to gas shit all up. You know, got to gas you all up. 
With a few days later, well, a few days later, I was still in town. My mother and I had gotten into a minor disagreement argument, but I just didn't want to be bothered after that. I didn't drive. So he called me and I told him I was ready to go back home. And he explained he was going to go back home that day as well. I agreed. Um, um, he seemed nice. Okay, I agreed he seemed nice and I was ready to go. So I hopped in his car and we rode out. He took me out to eat before we got on the road, you know, conversated on the way home. We smoked the best blunts ever. I don't smoke often, but when I do, I enjoy myself. Girl, who you telling? We listened to music and we talked. He dropped me off at home and really liked my apartment. You know, I asked him if he wanted to come in and he looked around. He said he really likes my apartment. We started to talk on the phone just about every day. On the weekends, he would come home from work and he would chill and um, we would chill and we'd go out, etc. You know, just basically enjoying each other's company. Well, one thing leads to another and we ended up having sex. It was cool, but after the sex, I felt so guilty that I immediately began to cry. I know it was weird, but I made a promise to myself that I would wait on the right man. It was soon to tell um, it was so, it was too soon to tell. It had only been a few weeks with him. So who's to say he the right man? Okay. Well, of course he left because I freaked out of the crime. The next day I was embarrassed and I just knew he would never call me back after my outburst of tears after the sex we had. Well, he actually did. He asked, um, well, he did. He asked, was I okay? And did he do something wrong? I explained to him, no, I just had my personal reasons, and he understood. Well, we began to chill again, and one thing leads to another, and we had sex, of course, without a condom. Excuse me. Okay, we began to chill again, and one thing led to another, and we had sex, of course, with a condom, but we ran out of them. He went to the store, and when he came back, he put that thing on. Wait, hold up. Okay. When um he went to the store and when he came back, you know what I'm saying? He put that thing on me. I was in a trance, totally not to my, my right. So basically he went to the store and when he came back, he put it on me. He put it on me so well that I was in a trance and I was totally not in my right state of mind. He took the condom off and you know the rest, April. I didn't think to take the morning after pill or anything. Well, a few more weeks went by and it was my mom's birthday and I was going to Houston to see her and take her out. Well, we decided to make plans and linked up that weekend, he and I. He didn't text me the next day until around three and asked me for $100. <laughs> okay, I'm about to repeat this, okay? He didn't text me the next day, so until around three o'clock after they had linked up, and asked me to ask me for a hundred dollars. What's such an odd amount? I'm thinking to myself. I said, no. I mean, that was a turnoff for me because I don't give men money, especially that are not my official man. So I told him no. Well, I stopped talking to him for a few weeks because he asked me for the money, and he was calling me, and I was just ignoring him. Well, I noticed I wasn't feeling well and I've, I've missed my period. No big deal. I thought my period had been irregular my entire life, so I'm not really worried about it. Well, a big event was happening in our city and it so happened to be on his birthday. We linked up again that night. I explained to him that I had been feeling strange and I had missed my period and I was going to take a pregnancy test that Monday. He was okay with the idea. He said he always wanted a little boy. He has an eight-year-old daughter. I'm 26 and he's 34, by the way. Well, we had sex again that same night on his birthday. And he said he loved me, blah, 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 blah. Okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, right. Well, the next day he leaves my house and I get a text from him and he is asking me once again for $100. I'm like, no, I don't have it. But he keeps pressing me and I was like, um, and was like, soon as... <clears throat> I was like, no, I don't have it. But he kept pressing me. And he was like, well, as soon as he gets back to Dallas that night, he'd give me 150. And if I really loved him, I'd give him the money. 
April, I have the money, but you know how I feel about giving men money that are not officially my man. Well, the next day I go to work and on my lunch break, I decided to take a pregnancy test. I took the test and it was positive. I couldn't believe it. I immediately called him. He took the news well. The next day I went to the doctor and confirmed that I was pregnant. A few days later, I took my ultrasound. I didn't hear from him in three days. So I sent the pictures of the ultrasound. He didn't respond. So I changed my phone number. We were still friends on social media, so I figured if he wanted to talk, he would hit me up through social media. I'm currently four months pregnant. I didn't hear from him for three months. He called me on Facebook Christmas Eve. We have talked a few times since then. We were supposed to meet up, but he was always a no-show. He kept calling and asked for forgiveness for not showing up. I forgave him, and he said he would be in my child's life, but he will not see me. He gives empty promises. What should I do, April? My feelings are mixed about him. I've been depressed for months. I feel he got me pregnant just to leave me. I have a supportive family, but they are hours away. A few friends, but I'm lonely. April, what should I do? I love you, by the way, April. And I love you too, girl. So that's why I'm about to do your video for a second time, Gia. Okay? You can't be falling asleep on me. You can tell and go play. Okay? So basically, Gia was saving herself for the right man. She want to find somebody that is um, stable in life, who loves God, who can provide, who is truthful, who is honest. You know what I'm saying? All of that good stuff. Not no lame ass, bum ass dude. Like, who the fuck want a lame ass, bum ass dude anyway? So basically, she was saving herself celibate. She'd been celibate for a year. She was saving herself for the right man because... I guess basically she haven't seen or found any right men for relationship worthy. So that's probably why she decided to go ahead and be celibate. Well, you know, it was her birthday. She about to turn 26. Her friends bring her out to the club. You know, she had out her number. She having, she having fun. She cool. She kicking it with people. But one dude called her back. You know, they link up. They go out. One thing leads to another, like, you know what I'm saying? Not that particular day, but like later on down the day, maybe like the next week, that same, you know what I'm saying? They end up having sex. Then they end up having sex again another time. They run out of the condoms. He goes to the store. He comes back, puts that D on her. You know, she got, I guess it must have been that motherfucking good, bitch, because he put the D on her so good. The bitch was out of her mind, like secretly, like not even secretly because she just told me that. But seriously, he put the D on her so fucking good that the bitch probably was like head over clouds. And allowed him to take the condom off. So, like, the nigga put the dick on her that good that she was like, take the condom off. Let him take the condom off and fuck her. So, one thing led to the next. She didn't take a pill. She didn't take the morning after pill. She ends up pregnant, okay? So, here's the thing, though. But here's the kicker. So, the first time he had sex with her, he asked her for $100. She didn't say borrow. She said he asked her for $100. So what the fuck? Are you like a trick, nigga? You give out the dick and then you got to get paid $100? Shit, you need to go a little bit higher than that. Boost your... What, your dick ain't worth more than $100? So anyway, you know what I'm saying? She told him, no, she don't have it. You know, she don't give men money. That's not an official man. She ain't about to give him no money. So she ignored him. Did she not speak to him for like, weeks because he asked her for a hundred dollars but i can respect that because we just now meeting each other we're not even in a official relationship we just been kicking it like a few weeks and you already asking me for a hundred dollars dude you got a motherfucking job that you travel back and forth for how is you traveling back and forth to work if you ain't got a hundred dollars on you how would you asking me i'm pretty sure you have friends family members who go ask your baby mama who you have the eight-year-old to you know what i'm saying shit like that but nah, he asked her because I guess he felt like the dick was that trend, like, you know, transing, like, you know what I'm saying? His dick was that trending. His dick was that mesmerizing that he felt like, you know, I'm going to just ask her for the $100. Okay. Well, Gia thought it was a strange amount, but not only that, she's not about to give him no money because that's not her man. I totally could feel that. Okay, girl, because I'm not about to give nobody none of my money either, especially, I don't know you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, we not friends. Like. We just met. Don't ask me for shit. So because of the first, you know, request for money from him, she stopped speaking to him for, for a while. And then, you know what I'm saying? They started speaking again and they ended up having sex that night again. 
So that's when I guess the dick was that mesmerizing that he took the condom off. And then the next day he asked for a hundred dollars again. And she was like, she don't have it. But not only did she tell him she don't have it, he basically was like, I'll give you $150 when I get back to Dallas. Nigga, if you got $150 to give me back, why don't you just take it for yourself? Okay. I'm sorry, but normally people do, this is 2019. I don't know about y'all, but like most adults who work have an, have an ATM debit card. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Most adults who work have an ATM debit card. So if you can get back to Dallas and give me $150, then you can go to an ATM machine and take it out. Why would you have to wait to Dallas? It doesn't even matter, neither here nor there. The bottom line is, why the fuck is he asking her for money? So every time he have sex with her, you got to get $100. Then he must be like a prostitute or like like on the side. That's like his side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm thinking. But, you know, I'm just thinking that because I'm being petty. But, I mean, like, my pettiness could be reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could really feel like, well, uh, when I get the dick, because it's so mesmerizing, I'm about to get paid for that shit, because my dick, my mesmerizing dick is worth $100. Bitch, let me tell y'all something. I'm sure that you feel like your pussies is worth more than $100, because I know I sure feel like mine is worth, worth way more than a motherfucking $100, okay? And if we just finish fucking and I need some money, I'm going to go for the big. Um, I'm going to need to leave here with a bag. Fuck the hundred dollars, cause that ain't shit. Okay, I can go to fucking the Dollar Tree and spend that shit with no problem. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So Gia told him that she don't have it. He told her, you know what I'm saying, that he give her the one fifty back versus. So basically, she was gonna make out like a fat rat. She was gonna get fifty dollars extra. Woohoo! Anyway, it seemed like after that, she didn't hear from him. He didn't reach out to her. She sent him a picture of the ultrasound because she basically told him that she was pregnant. He was happy for her. He got a little daughter who's already eight. He wanted to have a son. You know what I'm saying? And when she texted him and texted him the picture, the ultrasound, the nigga never responded. So what did you do? She she changed her phone number. Now, listen, first of all, if a nigga don't respond to my text messages, bitch, I'm not about to change my phone number. I'm not about to change my phone number because for one, that may make, I'm not about to change my phone number because the person on the other line who I'm trying to not to speak to no more may feel like I didn't pay my bill and they may not even feel like it's them. They're the reason why I cut my phone off. So what would I do? I just will block you from calling me. You know what I'm saying? If I don't want to fuck with you no more, I'm not about to change my number. You got to pay to change your number and you got to give everybody your number. I like, I'm not about to do that. Because I don't want you to hear the thing like the number has been changed. I want you to keep hearing it ringing and you feel like I'm not responding to you. But in reality, I got you blocked and I'm not even hearing that shit ring. This is how I would do the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is what I do. Okay. If you call me and I don't want to fuck with you, I block you. That's it. I'm not about to change my number. I have the same number for six years now since I moved here. I'm not about to change that shit. But anyway, he don't respond to her. He don't respond to her ultrasound. She cuts the phone off. If he want to talk to her, he can reach out through social media. This is the part that is like childish to me, okay? If you don't want the nigga calling your phone, why the fuck would you want him to contact you on social media? Does it make sense? You either going to block him or not block him. You know what I'm saying? You can't have him not calling your phone, but he can still reach out to you on social media. That right there does make no sense to me whatsoever. That right there was like childish but kind of like immature, if you you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Me personally, I feel like this. Like she says, she feels like he only got her pregnant to leave her. First of all, I don't think that men go around talking to women and thinking in their head, like, I'm going to just get her pregnant so I can't stop fucking with her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I just met you. Oh, hey, what's up? And we, we, we kicking it. What's up, boo? Oh, hey. And, you know, he kicking it to me. He gassing my head up. Oh, you're so beautiful. All of this good stuff. Because that's what the fuck they do. They gas your head up. Not always, but you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Listen, bitch. Men compliment you. Sometimes they may go overboard and we do the same shit. Okay. However, she feels like, why does she feel like he got her pregnant just to leave her? 
So I'm going to just fuck you and get you pregnant so I don't have to fuck with you no more. But I'm going to have to pay child support and all of this shit. People don't go around just getting people pregnant so they don't fuck with them anymore. But then again, you never know. This is this world is real fucking crazy. So she might have a point though. Gia might really have a point. The nigga might just want a kid but don't want to fuck with her. So here's the thing. Nigga laying up in the bed with her. He telling her he love her. If he telling you he love you while he in the pussy, girl, it's the pussy that he loving right now at the time being. Especially if you guys have just started fucking with each other. I'm glad that you didn't say nothing in return like I love you too. Because sometimes bitches do that shit. The dick could be that fucking good that they're like, oh my God, I love you. I just want to have your baby. Like. I know the dick be good, but damn bitch, you want to have a baby out of that shit? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. But some men can probably feel the same way. Like, basically, you know, the pussy's so good, I'm going to just impregnate it. I don't know. Okay? Either way, neither here nor there. He told her he loved her while they was fucking. That's just that shit where, sweetheart, your pussy is mesmerizing him. So don't think that his dick is all that good, okay? Because you was doing it to him as well as he was doing it to you. Now, you feel like, you know what I'm saying? He done told her he loved her. They, he want to have a kid with her, basically. All of this good stuff. You know, she's beautiful. La, 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 blah, 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 blah. But now he's telling her, I'll be in my kid's life, but I don't want to be with you. How the fuck do you go from, I love you, and then... I don't want to be with you or I can't see you. That makes no sense, okay? Sweetheart, let me tell you something. I understand that you're depressed. I understand that you feel down. I probably understand that, you know what I'm saying? You feel disappointed within yourself because you did make yourself a, a promise. You know what I'm saying? You made yourself a self-promise. And I get that. I understand that totally, okay? And you feel like he's full of empty promises, you know what I'm saying? Basically, he's full of empty promises, okay? And let's see, hold on. Hold the fuck on. Um, he leaves empty. I forgave him and he said he would be in my child's life, but he will not see me. He gives empty promises. What should I do, April? My feelings are mixed about him. First of all, if somebody tells you your feelings are mixed about him, if somebody tells you they love you and then they turn around like weeks later and, or months later, whatever, a couple months later and tells you, I don't want to be with you after you got them pregnant, that means that they really didn't fucking care about you in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I constantly keep telling y'all about the representatives. When you first meet somebody, you meet the representative because listen, if a nigga is a jerk or if a bitch is a jerk, if we both jerks, why would I want to get with you as a jerk? You're an asshole. Why would I want to fuck with you if you're an asshole? So they cover up that asshole side of them. Like, you know what I'm saying? They cover that shit the fuck up. And they be the nicest person in the world. You know what I'm saying? They tell you they love you. You're so pretty. I want to have a baby with you. I want to have a family with you. I want to meet your parents. I want to get married. I want to buy a house together. I want to go to the doctor's appointment together. Girl, and then the fucking masks come off and they told assholes, okay? You know what I'm saying? So that, that goes to say in anybody's relationship. Me personally, I know I could be a bitch. I know I could be real mean and nasty. I know that I don't like to be bothered sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I know I could have an attitude, but why would I portray that or just like, why would I let, allow a person that I really am trying to get with and just have met, know, or see that I'm an asshole and what do you got that I'm an asshole and, you know what I'm saying, a bitch? Because if I'm feeling him and... He, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, wouldn't want to turn him away. I wouldn't want him to turn. I wouldn't turn him off for me. So, of course, I'm going to come through with Sarah. Sarah is my alter ego. Sarah is my representative. I'm going to be Sarah. Hey, how are you? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. You know, I'm going to be real nice. I'm going to show you my nice side. And eventually, later on down the road, no, no one knows how soon Sarah is not going to be Sarah no more. April about to come out and be April herself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's going to be a month or two. I'm not saying it's going to be next week. Who knows? It's just when you start feeling comfortable. So basically, when you first met him, Gia, he was his representative. He was, he was Bob, okay? His name is really Rakim, all right? But he was being Bob. Like, my name's April, but I'm Sarah. That nigga was Bob at the time. He was being Bob to you, Gia. 
the whole time he was getting the goods and he was trying to kick it to you, telling you he loved you and all this. He want to have a little boy. He was bothered. But when he was Rakim was when he was asking you for the hundred dollars, when, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't responding when he told you he'd be in the kid's life, but he don't want to fuck with you. That's when he, or when he was standing you up and not coming through and meeting up and hooking up. That's when he was Rakim. You know what I'm saying? So Rakim is his real and Bob is his representative. So now you got mixed feelings about him because he done told you he loved you, but then he told you that, hmm, I'll be in a kid's life, but I don't want to fuck with you. Bitch, why would you have mixed feelings? You already said that he breaks promises. He's empty promises. He's not showing up. He's asking you for money. Let me tell you something. I'm not about to feel any type of way with anyone who tells me that they don't want to be with me and they asking me for money in the beginning of any type of relationship. Y'all didn't even establish a relationship. So, you know what I'm saying? There's no hard feelings. You know what I'm saying? He's an asshole. Point blank, period. There's an asshole in everybody. Okay? Point blank, period. Here's the thing. You're pregnant now. And though you might have broken your promise of celibacy to yourself, sweetheart, let me tell you something. This is not the time for you to be depressed because when you think about it, in reality, what are you doing? When you think about it in reality, babies make you happy. I don't know about everybody, but I know that they're a blessing and they're a beautiful thing and they will change your life forever. And they will take the bad moments and the negativity and they will enlighten you to the point where, you know what, you look at that child and you feel like, you know something, I'm going to do something positive. I'm going to do something to make sure that this child's life is an amazing journey. I'm going to do something with myself to where this child never has to worry about anything. And you forget about that dumb shit that that nigga put you through or that it was a one night stand or that, you know, saying he ran off with somebody else. You forget about that shit. I understand that you are lonely and your family is away or a couple of hours apart, but you have so much ahead of you in life that you just not even realizing that. This nigga Rakim, this is his loss. He might just be an asshole. How, who's to say that he even really had a job as construction? Let me tell you. Let me tell you about that. Okay. Because when you said construction, he works construction. And I didn't even think about this last week when I was reading this. But if you're a construction worker, you do have money. However, girl, let me tell y'all. <clears throat> let me tell y'all something. I remember back in the day, back in the day when I was like, you know, younger, you know, in my teens, or very, very early 20s, you know, niggas would say that they were construction when they was really motherfucking drug traffickers, drug dealers. OK, this is what they would say. I am working in construction or I work construction. Just because you wear them Timberland boots, nigga, does not mean that you work construction. You stand on the corner. What is you fucking um, looking at the corners, trying to see what the next thing is you want to be around here fixing? When niggas tell you that they in construction, back then, nine times out of ten, them niggas was drug dealers, okay? So now I'm trying to figure out, Gia, is this nigga a drug dealer, okay? And he just told you he's construction worker. Have you seen his motherfucking job place? Have you gone on any of the construction sites that he worked at? And found out that he's really a construction worker, or are you just going off of what he says? Because if so, then um, probably nine times out of ten, the nigga does not work construction. I'm just saying that because he didn't ask you for money two times, so he's either probably a fake ass male prostitute, or a drug dealer who needed some re up money, or a drug dealer who is a broke drug dealer and really don't know how to spread his product out and not use the shit. Either fucking way, honey. Let me tell you something. He could tell you all day that he's going to be in a child's life. Please do not get hung up on his words of telling you that he's going to be in a child's life. Because I have heard this on numerous occasions, not to me, okay, but on TV, on talk shows, in life, in general, from other people that have emailed me. You know what I'm saying? I have heard men tell women, well, I'll be in a child's life. I just don't want to be with you, but I'll be there for my child. Of course, they're going to say that. What the fuck does somebody look like saying, well, I don't want to fuck with you or the child. I cannot imagine anybody saying like, I don't want to fuck with you or the child or 
I don't want to be in the child's life and I damn sure don't want to be in yours. No man is going to say that shit. Like, who's to say that a man is going to say that shit? I mean, like, I'm pretty sure they have been some that have said it. Don't get don't get it twisted. There are some that do say that shit. But it's not on a regular basis where a man be like, well, I don't want to fuck with you and I don't want to fuck with the baby. I know that it's mine, but I don't want to fuck with the baby either. Like, that's really hatred and selfish, okay? So, of course, he's going to tell you, I want to be in a child's life. But I don't want to mess with you. I don't want to fuck with you. I don't want to be with you. Either way, he's going to tell you he want to be in a child's life because that's the right thing to do at that moment. And in reality, the nigga's walking off like, man, please, I'm not trying to think about her or that baby. How do I even know that that baby is even mine? You know what I'm saying? So, Gia, please don't get hung up on the fact that this nigga Rakim done told you that he's going to be in a child's life because that's not guaranteed, sweetheart. If he ain't calling you and checking up on you and seeing if you need anything for your unburned child, then he ain't worried about you nor that baby. Now, the next step is what should you do, sweetheart? Now, this is my thing. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not saying don't do it and I'm not saying do it. But me personally, I just feel like this. If you have to bring a person, either man or female, mother or father to court to get child support, then that means that you done dealt your last hand with them. Meaning you dealt your last hand, you done dealt with them this long, and you've been trying to get them to help you take care of y'all child together, but they are not trying to help. OK, they are not giving in. They are not being responsible. They are not doing the adult thing by trying to help you, because now, since they have not been trying, you are going to the courts to get child support. That to me, when you if you have to go to child support to get to get your your spouse or the other parent to pay for the child, that means that you have dealt your last hand and they've been not taking care of the kid and you try to work with them and they're not trying to work. With so now I'm going to take it to court. That to me is the last resort because if a person is taking care of their kid, whether y'all are together or not, if they taking care of their kid in a responsible way, you're not just going to sit there one day and be like, you know what? I'm going to just take rock him ass to court. I know he's been taking care of the baby. He's been providing. He's a good father, but you know something? I ain't got shit else to do. So I'm going to just bring him to child support court. Bitches don't sit around thinking that shit and neither do men. When a person has to go to court for child support, it's normally sometimes as the last resort. You know what I'm saying? This is the last motherfucking resort. And it's unfortunate like that, but that's how it be. Now, me personally, I have had to do that. I have had to go to court and, you know what I'm saying, get money from my kid's father. Not my last two kids' father, but you know what I'm saying? My, who, why is... You know what I'm saying? I had to do that. But you know why? It was a last resort. You are not really trying to do much. You're not trying to help out at all. You're not even trying to buy some motherfucking diapers. Nigga, where are we doing that at? I'm not about to let you skate free. You're not about to skirt on me and your child. Nigga, I don't give a fuck if you don't fuck with me. <laughs> Better yet, I don't even want to fuck with you. But you have a responsibility. Um. And that was just to one of them that I did that to. Because you going around, you talking shit, you know what I'm saying? You acting like you better than people. You, you know what I'm saying? You're not brushing your teeth. Your breath is smelling really kind of like, you know, toxic. You know what I'm saying? And you talking shit. Like, literally, you talking and it smells like shit's coming out of your mouth. And you talking shit about me, okay? We not going to do that, okay? So what did I have to do? I had to take him to court because... You either going to take care of the child or you're not going to take care of the child and you're going to just miss me with all that extra shit. So I ended up taking him to court. Do you know how much money I got every two weeks? Six dollars and 80 motherfucking cents. OK, that shit can't even buy. A fucking store brand bag of diapers, okay? Let alone a Happy Meal. So, you know what I would do with those six dollar checks? All right, I would just put them to the side because it's like I'm not even gonna bother. Why am I even going to bother with it? And then child support started coming out with those credit cards. You know what I'm saying? That you know made it life easier. Well, when you first got those credit cards in New York State. 
if you called to see if you had any money on your car, like meaning if you had any child support money, because that's what it was for, the first two calls were free. Thereafter that, you had to pay 50 cents, I think, or, and they, they would deduct it from your statement, like your, your, your funds that came in. Well, I called that shit twice and there was nothing on there. And like, probably like two months later, I called again, still nothing. Bitch, please. I chucked that shit right out the fucking car window as I was driving that shit. Like, come on now. We not about to do this no more. At that moment in time, I was just like, you know what? You're a deadbeat. I'm not even going through this because I work a job and I could take care of my kids. I don't really even mean anything to you. I'm, you know what I'm saying? The type of person I am, like, I just feel like this. I'm not about to bring you to court to, for child support. That to me is like, I got to beg you to take care of your kid. I got to get other people the fuck involved to take care of your kid. That's not about to go down like this. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm not even going to fuck with you. I'm not even going to ask you for no child support. I'm just going to leave you the fuck alone. You leave us the fuck alone. Leave me definitely alone. But definitely leave the kid alone too. Because if you want to be a deadbeat and you don't want to take care of your kid, then you know something? I'm not going to go ahead and just bring you to court. I don't have time to be going back and forth, looking at your raggedy ass face in court with me. And this is how I felt. Okay. So I left it at that. Well, when I moved here, you know, my daughter is 22 years old now. So I've been here almost five years. When I was about to leave, actually to move here, I get a phone call from the court. Okay. The judge. Now, mind you, prior to that, my daughter's father said, we have to go to court for child support. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't pay me child support. You haven't given me child support in like 12 years. What are you talking about? Yes, I have. I've been, you haven't given me shit. Try to tell me, well, probably social services has it. I said, first of all, I'm not on social services. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Well, maybe because I owe back arrears. That has nothing to do with me. Well, we have to go to child support court because, um, what did he try to sell me? He tried to get it modified. First of all, you're a liar. He always lies. He lies and lies and lies. He makes up stories. Okay. This is the type of person he is. He makes up stories. Um, and you know what I'm saying? I was like, whatever. And hung up. A couple of days later, I get a call from the judge telling me, why aren't I in court? I'm like, excuse me? Because I was like kind of rude because I don't even know you. How I know this is a judge? Excuse me? Why am I not in court? And, you know, then she told me who she was and I looked in the call ID and sure enough, this judge is calling me while he's sitting in front of her. She told me I had to be to court. I said, ma'am, I did not know. I did not get any letter to my home stating that I had to be to court. Um, did, did I move? Yes, I did move. Why didn't I tell the courts that I moved? For what? Why would I tell the courts that I moved? For what? He hadn't paid child support in like over 12 years. What does it matter if I moved? For what? Oh, he hasn't? No. Well, he's here trying to get it modified. And he said that you agreed upon it. Agreed upon what? I haven't got child support in 12 years. What are you getting modified? Nothing. Okay. Well, apparently he was paying child support probably for like two years. And I didn't know about it. It was $20 a fucking month. Okay. Did this nigga try to go to court and get it modified? How motherfucking cheap you want to get? $20 a month? <laughs> nigga, I don't even need the shit. All right? Keep your $20. But you modifying what? What you want to pay me? A dollar a month? God damn. So the judge said, uh, Mr. Steele, Miss April did not okay and agree to have your child support modified. And she just started going off of him and she just hung the phone up and she let me know everything was fine and I hung up. So, you know what I'm saying? Now I got to call child support and get another, another car. They asked me why I don't have the car because I chucked it out the window. Well, he's been paying for the past two years. Oh, okay. Well, wow. What the motherfucker do for him? My daughter's like 16 now. Big deal. Okay. This is the shit that I have to go through because you just want to be a dickhead and not pay. Okay. I'm not about to go through that for anybody. Like I'm, I'm not about to go through that. That's not me. And I just feel like this. 
There should be no reason that somebody should have to bring another parent to child support to pay for their kid. They just shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all laid down together and made this baby. And now you're wondering, Gia, what should you do? You have mixed feelings for this nigga? Let me tell you something. There should be no mixed feelings. The only thing that you should be doing is making sure that he's responsible and take care of his priorities. If the nigga wanted to have a baby, he took the condom off. Now he should reap what he sells, okay? It's time for him to take care of the baby. Not to tell you that you don't want to be with me. You could care less. You could give two fucks if the nigga don't want to be with you. If he's full of empty promises, there's your fucking key flag word right there. If you say that that nigga is full of empty promises, then I guarantee you he's not really going to be there like he's supposed to for your child with him because he's full of empty motherfucking promises. And the nigga's broke. He's not a fucking construction worker. He could have thought of anything in the world, but he thought about that because he doesn't have a job. If he's a real construction worker, because they make pretty good, decent living. If he was a real construction worker and he traveled back and forth to work, don't you think that this nigga would have money in his pockets? Okay. If he was a real construction worker, don't you think that he would have a bank account and he wouldn't need to borrow a hundred dollars from your fucking black ass or whatever color you are. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't need to do that. This nigga is living a foul life. He on some shit. You shouldn't even have mixed feelings. He gave you the D. He mesmerized you. You broke your promise of celibacy. Let's get past it. Move forward because we're about to have this beautiful baby. Okay. And she is, oh, she or he is going to consume all of your time. Okay. It's a mistake that happens, meaning on your part, things happen in life. We learn from our mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I understand that you probably let yourself down because you wanted the right man. But let me tell you something, sweetheart. It's a life lesson. That shit that you just went through and are going through right now is a life lesson. That shit make you stronger. When you go through shit in life, like mistakes and struggles, to me, for me, it makes you a stronger person. It allows you to look back at that, that bullshit that you did and not do the shit again, okay? Like, seriously, like, that's like, okay, saying, oh, let's see, I'm gonna, what I'm going to use, for example. Okay, let's say I went to the store and I stole, like, um, some TVs, okay? And I got caught and I went to jail. That right there is a life lesson. Like, bitch, I, don't, I ain't stealing. I, got, I ain't stealing. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to go back to jail, okay? That's a life lesson. That was a dumb mistake on my part. And it taught me a lesson. It's the same shit. You know what I'm saying? I understand that you might have let yourself down. I understand that you might be disappointed in yourself. But here's the kicker, sweetheart. You're about to be a mother, a single mom. And all of that negative shit that you done felt and are feeling right now, you about to be a strong individual because you're going to have this baby who's going to depend on nobody but you, solely you. You know what I'm saying? So your mistake might have been a mistake. It might have been a letdown. But you're about to have this beautiful child that you're about to bring into this world. And you ain't going to be lonely for a very long time because you're like, you lonely and this and this and that. Yeah, I get that. You lonely. But I promise you, you won't be lonely for a very long time. And the shit that you have just put yourself through with the celibacy, trust me when I tell you, once you have your baby, you're not going to want no strange dudes, no strange people around your daughter or your son. You're going to be really overprotective and you're going to be really, really even more protective of, over yourself, okay? And you're going to stand your ground and you're going to realize that this child is more important to me than anybody. And celibacy, I'm not even thinking about a man at all, okay? This is what happens. So we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our life lessons. These are life lessons. Don't let that, don't, do not allow that shit, Gia, to kick you down and to depress you. You have a baby that's growing inside of you. You got this fucking nigga, Rakim, who's on the other side of town, probably asking all type of bitches and girls for $100, $200. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is his, this is him. This is who he is. This is his motto or motto, or whatever the fuck you call it. His M.O. This is his M.O. Okay. This is what Rakim does. He give the D out. This is what he does. Like, you know what I'm saying? He feel like his shit is all that, that once he put it on you, you know, mm, mm, mm. once he put that shit on you, that that shit got you so open that he asked you for something and you're like, oh yes, baby, here you go. But here's the thing. It might've mesmerized you, sweetheart, but it didn't mesmerize you that motherfucking hard because you still wasn't trying to give up the motherfucking funds. Okay. So please don't worry about him. Let him deal with what the fuck he has to deal with. He got an eight-year-old daughter. 
I guarantee you he probably has more than one child. If not, then that's great. But I guarantee you he probably don't even take care of that kid. Because if he did take care of that kid, why the fuck is he asking your ass for $100? I'd be damned. Could you imagine if you just finished fucking a nigga, fucking a dude, fucking a man, whatever you want to call it. You just finish having sex with him. And then he get up and leave and he then he texts you. The nigga can't even be man enough to ask you face to face. What's up, baby? Can I get $100? Give you some D tonight. He can't even ask you face to face. Can he get a hundred dollars? Then the nigga gotta text you. He can't even ask you verbally over the phone. Can he get a hundred dollars? He gotta he gotta text you. That's right there, a coward move. If you can't ask me in person or verbally ask me over the phone, but you gotta text it to me, that means you a coward. You ain't man enough. You know what I'm saying? And you doing some sly shit. You know what I'm saying? So he feel like oh, cause I gave her the D and I really put it on her because she was moaning and all that shit that I'm entitled to a hundred dollars. Nigga, if your dick is worth $100, then you ain't entitled to much of nothing, okay? That's serious. So this is this is how Rakim is thinking, like, because he put the D on her, he can get some funds. Because he didn't do that not one, but he did it twice. Let me tell you something. If a nigga finished fucking me, okay, and asked me for $100, I'm going to look at him like, what the fuck, you a prostitute or something? He ain't getting shit out of me. That, to me, is humiliation. Did you just try to play me and ask me for $100 because you gave me some of, some of that raggedy ass dick? boy bye because then at the moment now your dick is raggedy because you asking me for money that and you we just got finished fucking and you ask me for money nigga your dick is raggedy if it's only worth a hundred dollars if that's all you can ask for to get then your dick is raggedy and go ahead and get the fuck up out of here with that shit you know what i'm saying he not man enough he had to fucking text you and ask you for a hundred dollars Bitch, I wouldn't have even responded to that shit. I would have looked at that shit, laughed, and blocked his fucking punk ass like, ah, oh, well, I guess you gave up the goods for free today, nigga, because it's not even worth a hundred dollars. Obviously, it wasn't even worth a hundred dollars if you couldn't even give it to him. Let me tell you something. He showed you his representative. He ain't about shit. Your feelings should not be mixed. Your feelings need to be put into taking care of your baby, getting yourself together, getting yourself ready, because you're about to have a whole new world, a whole new life. Okay, with somebody little who's gonna depend on you, you gonna have to do everything. You ain't gonna have time to worry about him. If he's telling you that he's gonna show up and he don't show up, then he's a liar. If he's telling you that he loves you and he's telling you he don't wanna be with you, then he's a liar. Okay? If he's telling you he works construction and he's asking you for $100, bitch, he's a motherfucking liar. Okay? He's a liar. All right? You met the nigga at the club. He was trying try to fill on whoever and get whoever number he could and be a leech off of the woman. He's a leech. He's a bum ass nigga. A bum ass man. Whatever the fuck you want to call him, he's a bum. Because if you can meet somebody, if you could just meet a woman and then start asking him for money, you're a motherfucking bum. Okay? I'm not saying that the man always got to give the woman. It's 50-50. But I don't think that anybody should just start meeting, messing with somebody and then turn around. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's a bum move on anybody's part. That's just like if a bitch was just fucking with a nigga, okay? He, she just started messing with the man. If a female just started messing with the man and they done had sex like twice and she asking him for money, that's a bum move. You're a bum bitch. If a man does that, you're a bum man. You know what I'm saying? You're a bum nigga. You're just a bum, okay? You're just a bum. Straight up. And we don't mess with bums, sweetheart. It's 2019. We're not fucking with no lame-ass men. We're not fucking with no lame-ass women, okay? It's time to build yourselves up. Stop gloating. Stop gloating on bum, on, on, on dumb shit. Stop gloating on dumb-ass men, okay? Stop gloating on dumb situations. Use them shits as tools. Use them shits as life lessons, okay? Use those mistakes as life lessons so you can fucking move past that shit, grow up, and better yourself. Stop fucking lingering onto somebody that's not not even worth your time. I understand you got in your feelings because that shit happens, especially when you're vulnerable and you haven't been in a relationship in a certain amount of time. You are alone and you you seek companionship. Everybody seeks companionship. I don't give a fuck who you are or what you say. Everybody seeks companionship. Don't nobody want to be the fuck alone, okay? And then when somebody has been alone for so long, they become vulnerable, all right? And they start feeding off of what this person, this other person is telling them because they're vulnerable. So I get that, but you know what? We have to use these things as a life lesson and don't let, uh, don't allow it to just bring us down or depress us or get us outside of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, Gia. I wish you nothing but the best in your pregnancy, for real, because I believe that you deserve that. Every woman deserves to have a happy pregnancy, regardless of who the father is. You deserve a stress-free fucking pregnancy. Okay. Straight up. 
You got family. You got yourself. You do not need anybody that is full of empty promises because that empty promise is going to go into more and more and more and more empty promises. Just like this. He going to tell you, he can tell you anything under the sun. Well, I'm going to get the baby to crib. And what do you do? You wait on him because he's told you he's going to get the baby to crib. And then baby's being born and I still don't have a crib. Okay. So now that I'm here, I have to bring my baby home and the baby's going to have to sleep in the bed next to me, or I'm going to have to go out and get a crib. You done got the baby home and he still ain't come through and he definitely ain't come through with a crib. Let me tell you something. A person that gives you nothing but empty promises and constantly breaks their promises means that they are a liar. And those are the type of people that you just need to stay away from, clear yourself from. Okay. Don't, I, I think like, you know what I'm saying? I think like with a lot of people these days, like not even a lot of people, but when people are trying to get with another person, I think basically they just try to tell you what the fuck they think you may want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I love you. So does he feel like you want to hear that? Me personally, I don't want to hear that shit, especially if we just started fucking with each other like a couple of weeks. I That's a turn off for me. And that's a red flag. That's a red flag. You know what I'm saying? That would definitely be a red flag if I was trying to get with somebody, which I'm not. But I feel like if somebody to tell you that, you know what I'm saying, they love you like right off the bat, to me, that's that's like a serious red flag. Like, okay, nigga, do you really think you're going to tell me what the fuck you want to tell me and I'm supposed to go for that shit? Like, I'm supposed to be like, okay. No, that's what they want you to hear. They feel like they want to tell you what you, they think you want to hear. And in reality, I don't want to hear none of that shit. I don't give two fucks, okay? Just be real about your shit and just get it and then and then get up and go home. You don't, got, you don't have to feed me no extra shit. You don't have to spoon feed me no extra fucking sugar and sweetener to go along with the, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. Just be, be yourself. Be real about the shit. But there are people that just really can't do that. And I just seem to not understand why. Like, I cannot stand when somebody tell me something that they think that I want to hear. And I can automatically tell that you're telling me something that you think I might want to hear. And I, and I say, like, are you trying to appease me? Are you trying to tell me what you think I might want to hear? Because I really don't. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate that Rakim was that type of person, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And now we're going to be growing up about it and we're going to move forward. I know something good happened in the end. You have a baby and maybe not, um, he may not be in the picture, but you know something, fuck him. It's your baby. This is your new little family. And I'm trying to tell you, kids are like a blessing and then they cannot be sometimes, but that's just part of life. They are yours to keep forever and they have unconditional love most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So let you know what you would do. I already told you what I would do. I would not even count on him for anything. I wouldn't worry about um, his broken promises. If you have any of his information, meaning his address, his license plate, um, his full name, I would definitely give that to the court because you're having a baby and you have informed him and he already said he's going to be in a baby's life. So if you're going to be in a baby's life, okay, cool. We're going to take this shit to court. And we're going to make sure of that, you know what I'm saying? But me personally, you know what I'm saying? I guess, listen, I'm older. My kids are older. I don't have to give child support, you know what I'm saying? And my kids, my husband, he takes care of them. But, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like this. I don't feel like women or men should have to bring a court into the situation to be able to take care of the kid. That's not right. But I understand that you have to for some people. But I just feel like that's fucked up. And that's not right. And I feel like everybody should be taking care of their kids, regardless. You shouldn't have to bring the courts into shit. And I understand, like, sometimes in life that, you know what I'm saying, the courts are brought in because of certain situations. But I don't feel like this is a certain situation. He's just an asshole. And I feel like live up to your duties and your responsibilities and do what the fuck you need to do. And Gia, as for you, I feel like this. Listen. Bitch, don't allow this to stagnate you. Don't allow his ignorance and selfishness get you to the point where you're depressed because you just allow, you're just doing what he wants you to do. You know what I'm saying? Basically is he wants you to cry and blubber and feel some type of way about him and because he's not with you. And unfortunately you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? You got to say, fuck this nigga. Like, fuck this nigga. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm living a good life. Whatever. Whatever makes you feel good. But get him out of your system because in reality, the nigga's not worth it. You probably have a mixed feelings because you're having a baby with him. And who don't want to be with their child's father? Like, I have never met anyone that got pregnant by a dude and was like, oh, I don't want to be with him. Everybody wants to be with their kid's father in the beginning when they first get pregnant because you just got pregnant. You know what I'm saying? But as life goes on, some things don't work out. And of course, you don't want to be with them. I get that. But everybody wants to have a family when they have a baby. They envision this. Like for me personally, I did not envision me having a baby by myself um, and not being with the kid's father. I never envisioned that. Okay. I envision us being a family. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that feels that way. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like this, like if we can have a family together and we can lay down and do everything together, then I feel like we can come to terms together and take care of this baby. But since he's acting like an asshole and he's full of empty promises, sweetheart, I think that your best bet is to take him to court. And please tell me that you have his information. Like, so that way you can get back in touch with him because motherfuckers be so quick to just change their numbers, Gia. Change their numbers, change their social media. All type of shits just to avoid, you know what I'm saying, paying for shit. So that's just my opinion. Okay. So, you guys, that was the real talk from last week. I'm going to go. I got an hour and 45 minutes left before I go get Mumsy. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and do this wig tutorial because that's the reason why I got this fucking head wrap on. Well, no, it's not really the reason why I got this head wrap on. It's the reason why I got this makeup on because sometimes I come on here with no fucking makeup and could care less. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. But... But right now, I'm going to have to do this wig video. So, you guys, I love you. Leave Gia your information below. Let her know what you would do in this situation. I wish you the best, Gia. I hope you guys have a like an amazing day, okay? And please don't be mad with me no more because Real Talk wasn't up last week. I mean, I did see some comments talking about, um, you know, I need to... I forgot what she said. You know, basically, she was like, um, she needed Real Talk and to get the shit popping basically like um what was the words like i'm trying to figure out what the fuck she said because it wasn't in a real talk video she left a comment on the next video for the next day um you know saying like basically um have a schedule and have this shit posted every wednesday okay first of all i do that every motherfucking wednesday and i had to let it be known like sweetheart i had surgery i wasn't doing no videos for like six weeks so where you been at? Okay. I did one real talk the whole time that I was out on surgery. And then I did one like later on after that. Who is calling my phone? Like seriously. Hello? We canceled if we don't hear from you today. You're pre-approved for a lower monthly payment as well as loan forgiveness. We've tried a number of times to reach you with no success. Press 5 now to speak to a specialist before your pre-approval is canceled. To decline this limited time offer, press 9 now and your pre-approval... Hi, are you interested in this bit of loan for you, Ms. Program? Why do you guys keep calling my phone? You guys keep calling me and then I block your number and then you call me from another phone. I'm too old for a student loan, okay? Stop calling my phone. See what I'm saying? Like, look, see, I didn't I say I block people... When I get calls like this, I block the number. But it seems like these motherfucking places have all these other numbers. Do you know how many times I have blocked the Marriott or the Hilton Hotel? Thank you for staying with us. Your family has referred. No, my family has not referred you because my family don't go no fucking way. And I have never stayed with you. So I blocked that number. I think I blocked like 50 numbers of theirs. This one I have blocked like four times from four different numbers. Okay. I'm not, a, I don't have a student loan. I ain't never been to college. Okay. That should be irritating me. And it always comes at the wrong time. Like if I'm trying to take a nap, which I very rarely do, you know what I'm saying? Then I get crazy calls or when I'm doing a video. Either way, you guys, I love you. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon.